Victor Uribe's A350H. In a not-so-distant future, we could be cruising in aircraft that are not only sleek in design, but also eco-friendly. We have seen mind-blowing concepts and ideas of the future of the aviation industry floating in, and today we'll talk about Victor Uribe's A350H. His creation will enable passenger planes to perform a vertical takeoff, and as if that is not enough, Uribe promises that his airliner will run on water. How is that even possible? Fasten your seatbelt for this is nothing close to a normal takeoff. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated with interesting videos on the future of the aviation industry. Airplanes and environmental friendliness do not normally go together. These flying machines are notorious for using massive amounts of fuel and polluting the atmosphere. However, this hasn't stopped designers from developing eco-friendly designs. Of course, these are merely concepts, yet they provide manufacturers a sense of what consumers expect. The future of the aviation business and transportation is taking a sustainable turn. Victor Uribe has attempted to rid VTOL aircraft of the reputation for being inefficient and heavy. He has crafted the A350H with higher payloads and lower fuel requirements. The Airbus A350H airplane was specially developed with fast catching space limits and the desire to fly green in mind. At his best, Uribe leverages aerodynamics. The elegantly formed shape with its various curves is inspired by dolphins to attain maximum speed with the least amount of effort. Using cryogenic hydrogen generated from the water makes the airplane more ecologically friendly. At least, that's what Victor Uribe, the designer, hopes. Nonetheless, we can confidently say that the future is promising. It looks bright green. Several technical advancements emerging daily are sketched frequently. We may have just found a solution for aviation, and flying will also be more eco-friendly. Victor Uribe's airplane will most likely ascend to the skies in the next 30 years. The airliner that will take off vertically from the ground. And what makes this incredible airplane so environmentally friendly is its running on hydrogen. The Airbus A350H, as he prefers to call it, will run on hydrogen fuel manufactured from the water. Can you imagine? Water collected from a local river powering a futuristic airliner? In 2050, the city of Frankfurt may never find the use of conventional airports. Their hydrogen-powered aircraft will do vertical takeoffs, saving on runaway space. An airliner is designed to transport a large number of people, often more than 100, over a long distance. To perform a VTOL, a massive machine, and a lot of fuel are required. Some scientists have argued that it is not possible to lift something like this vertically. A vertical takeoff and landing or VTOL aircraft may hover, take off, and land vertically without using a runway. This category includes a wide range of planes, choppers, and thrust vectoring fixed-wing aircraft. The category also includes rotor-operated hybrid planes such as cyclogyros, cyclocopters, and gyrodynes. Some VTOL aircraft can also do conventional takeoff and landing. They can also do short takeoff and landing or short takeoff and vertical landing. Others, such as some helicopters, can only fly through VTOL due to a lack of landing gear capable of taxiing. Aside from helicopters, there are two specific types of VTOL aircraft in military service. The first is a tilt rotor plane like the Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey. The second is the thrust vectoring planes like the Harrier family and the latest F-35B Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter or JSF. Only helicopters are now in widespread usage in the civilian sector. In general, VTOL aircraft capable of STOVL use it whenever practicable. This is because it significantly enhances takeoff, weight, range, or payload when compared to pure VTOL. Vertical takeoff has been a concept for a very long time. Designs for a VTOL may be seen in Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbook. The first manned VTOL aircraft, which were crewed helicopters, took to the air in 1907 but they wouldn't be fully developed until after World War II. A variety of methods have been employed to create workable VTOL fixed-wing planes. To begin, Henry Berliner's experimental horizontal rotor fixed-wing aircraft from 1922 to 1925. We have Nikola Tesla's 1928 patent. We have George LeBerger's 1930 putatively impractical VTOL fixed-wing airplanes with a tilting engine, another tilt-rotor aircraft, 
The Baines Heli plane was created by a British plane designer Leslie Everett Baines in the late 1930s. During the Iran hostage crisis not so long ago, the US military was attempting to figure out how to move a large, heavy aircraft like a C-130 off a small landing strip or an unimproved surface. The helicopters could not lift enough weight and had insufficient range. They investigated several RATO, also known as Rocket Assisted Takeoff Solutions. After some deliberation, they determined that it was just a lousy concept that was too hazardous. However, Victor Uribe's A350H in Genius design takes advantage of aerodynamics. It has a streamlined structure and a curved bottom. The airline's engines are located under the plane and face downwards during takeoff to give it a vertical thrust. Yes, this may need to require a colossal amount of energy to generate enough power to perform VTOL, but Victor had thought of that. The A350H airliner will be powered by cryogenic hydrogen contained in high-pressure tanks. So how will this work? Powered by water. Victor's approach is to make use of hydrogen, a new fuel that doesn't emit any hazardous pollutants in airplanes. Hydrogen, long hailed as a sustainable fuel, is now seriously gaining ground as potential aviation fuel. Experiments are now in progress to demonstrate its efficacy. The hydrogen-powered plane experiments establish their potential to fly vast as a conventional plane. They can carry more than 100 people each in flight and cruise over thousands of kilometers while emitting just water. In recent studies on the prospects of hydrogen-powered aircraft, the market for such aircraft might open as early as 2040. To do this, there are still many difficult obstacles to overcome. However, if these obstacles can be removed, aviation's future might be greener than it is now. Even so, the underlying technology for hydrogen aircraft has advanced. The first hydrogen-powered aircraft, a single-seater that Boeing flew in 2008 from an airport close to Madrid, Spain. This successful attempt demonstrated the viability of the technology. Also, the first four-seater hydrogen aircraft started flying from Stuttgart Airport in 2016. It was developed in Germany by the German Aeronautical Research Agency, the University of Ulm, and a corporation named H2Fly. There are four main components of a hydrogen plane. The first is a storage system to securely store liquid hydrogen. Then fuel cells convert hydrogen to energy, a mechanism to manage the power of the cells, and lastly, a motor to drive a propeller. All four of these categories need to be adequately developed to produce fully commercial aircraft. Today, the majority of the hydrogen used in the world is created by reforming natural gas, a fossil fuel, into methane. This creates a lot of carbon dioxide. However, Uribe's plan is to create green hydrogen by using an electric current. The current is generated from a renewable resource. It splits water into oxygen and hydrogen while lowering emissions from the process. If it is achievable, Flying may turn out to be a really green mode of transportation since no emissions originate from the planes themselves. Photoelectrochemical water splitting is another method for generating hydrogen from water. Specialized semiconductors effectively split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen using light energy. This is a long-term technological route with negligible or no greenhouse gas emission potential. The PEC water splitting process converts solar energy into chemical energy in the form of hydrogen. The semiconductors used in the PEC process are comparable to those used in photovoltaic solar energy production. However, in PEC applications, the semiconductor is submerged in a water-based electrolyte. Sunlight powers the water splitting process. Key Takeaway the future of aviation is promising as the airport transport sector continues to grow. Around 4.1 billion people traveled on aircraft globally in 2017. On 37 million commercial flights, 56 million tons of freight were transported. Every day, more than 10 million people and almost $18 billion worth of cargo are transported by air. This demonstrates the huge economic impact aviation has had on the world economy. This is further supported by the fact that aviation accounts for 3.5% of global GDP and has generated 65 million employments worldwide. The sole fast global transportation system is provided by aviation. Resultantly, aviation boosts the economy, creates jobs, and makes it easier to do business and go abroad. Victor's innovation, like many others in this field, will ensure the aviation industry remains sustainable and environmentally friendly. The world's population is only increasing, and soon will not be able to afford vast spaces for airports with extended runways. 
Sooner, we will need to think of alternatives to non-renewable energy sources, especially in the aviation industry. What are your thoughts about the Dolphin-inspired A350H? Write your comments in the comment section below. To this end, thank you all for watching our video.